just want to tell you about the car and where we're at now. We've done a lot of life. They still don't want me to put it on the but I can at least talk to you. Can you check my number? I don't know. System and uh, Joachim was there. We yeah. had a mixer, and uh, one thing that impressed me very much was the drummer. But you had what seven musicians? Actually, four main musicians. I mean, uh, keyboards, bass player, drummer, uh, and Joachim uh, playing keyboards and also uh, taking care of all the product technology. And we're rehearsing the concert for the Millennium at um, for the uh, at the Greek pyramids of Egypt that we were preparing at that time. And then we uh, had on stage uh, lots of other musicians, uh, symphonic orchestra from the Caribbean house, and uh, some also uh, uh, traditional Arabic in musicians playing uh, for some of the very old instruments coming, I mean, dating from the uh, Pharaonic age. And uh, this this project has been really. Uh, Done with not only with the help, but I would say with the collaboration of DG Design and and, uh, and uh, the complicity of DG Design from day one. And I must say that it could have uh, it simply uh, could have happened without uh, Pro Tools because uh, we saved so much time because of the uh, new Pro Tools technology. And I'm, I'm not just saying this because we are here at the AES with Kuznet today. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's ab absolutely true. And uh, Joachim here being a, a real virtuoso uh, with Pro Tools from uh, quite a while would be able to talk about Pro Tools much more and in much better way than I could, uh, I could do it. But I must say that uh, we've, we've achieved this uh, whole project, uh, Metamorphosis, the new album, entirely on Pro Tools. No tape, no even extra mixing desk or mixing. So board. you actually mixed, you, you composed, recorded into it, and mixed entirely on Pro Tools. And, and uh, even we went with the uh, hard disk uh, directly to the mastering room. So we had absolutely no converters from, I mean, between the, uh, I would say, between the, the composition process and the CD. In, uh, in shops or in record shops today. Wow. And the, the only converters show. actually are the converters you have at home, but no, no converters apart from that. Wow. And the album is actually doing very well, I've heard. You're yes. actually promoting it right now. Yes, I'm actually all, all over uh, Europe promoting the album. It has been uh, released... Uh, 31st uh, of January? Yes, yeah. more or less two weeks ago, and uh, having been uh, one of the best entries in Europe in the right. territory, so... Right. That's great for you. It's not only, uh, I think it's not only due to Pro Tools, but, <laughs> but a little bit. <laughs> Someone else who's responsible. <laughs> okay, could you tell me what your first exposure to Pro Tools was? Do you remember that? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, uh, probably uh, 
a few years ago when uh, when uh, the uh, Pro Tools was not yet the 24 bits version we, we know today. And uh, like all, like a lot of uh, uh, software uh, dedicated to music, the beginning was a bit difficult and a uh, bit difficult on both sides because the first the first uh, the, the, the first um, uh, software was not sophisticated enough or was not maybe also quick enough and uh, also I think the mentalities a few years ago yeah, we're all right, and we, we were all discovering a new something that we realized and I realized will change in a very uh, uh, near future at that time we had to consider that it will change entirely our habits and we don't like changing our habits most of the time. Well, we are, it's for the better. It's, yeah. yeah, but it's, it makes an effort. I mean, yeah. you, you, it, makes, it deserves an effort. And uh, obviously, the, uh, uh, I mean, considering doing an old project on Pro Tools was at the time something like a uh, jump and like uh, uh, quite dramatic change in uh, uh, our habits being uh, used to uh, the old traditional recording technique we all know. I mean, uh, with uh, uh, 20 multi-tracks, analog multi-tracks or digital multi-tracks, and uh, the uh, uh, mixing, the conventional, traditional mixing desk we all, we all know. It's, it's, uh, I think it's, we were all thinking, and I was thinking that it should, it should become a, a revolution as important as that uh, the first uh, uh, analog synthesizers I, I, I've been for, in, for instance in my life. Oh, exactly. It's exactly what is, what's what happening with, with this new uh, uh, Pro Tools 24 bits. What is the actual configuration of Pro Tools that you have now in the studio? So should that's, I ask that Joachim should answer to this because he's changing it more or less every week. He is. <laughs> Do you want to come up with not every problem? month. Joachim? Hello. Uh, actually, the, the setup for the Jean-Michel studio is uh, uh, one Pro Tools 5 and uh, there's uh, one uh, Magma extension chassis uh, with uh, three, four, four DSP, uh, four mix form. Four mix form. Four, four mix form and two old DSP form okay. for using the whole uh, plugin to use uh, 24 bit technology. So you have an expanded uh, Mix Plus? Exactly. Wow. It, it is an expanded Mix Plus. That we, we, because for doing this album, we need so much uh, powerful to, to, to create exactly what uh, Michel wants. We have to, to use so many tracks, something around uh, 80 for one, one, more, one song. In the email that you sent me, you said that you finally got to something like 98 tracks? Or 89? Exactly. 89, yes. sorry. Yeah, exactly. Like so uh, we, we we use two big screen, yeah. 20, 21 big screen for for can, for for checking all the tracks and uh, that uh, that's the, the biggest setup I, I ne never use. I think it's one of the biggest ones around. I now so, you, yeah. you mentioned the word plugins. Plugins. Yeah. Which ones were you using? Uh, we use uh, Dewey. Dewey. You were doing uh, beta testing for the, exactly, the Dewey Spider. We, yeah, we Spider and Scent, Dewey Scent. And uh, this is one, one of our favorite one, Dewey, because the, the sound is so so great. That, that use uh, analogic technology. The sound is, uh, we, we can play with the sound, create a new sound, distort the sound. Everything is, is cool and e easy to use. And we use the, the Waves plugin with Good. the gold, gold, uh, the gold bundle. Yeah, exactly. With the beta flanger and everything, uh, all the all this plugin. So when you were doing like a final mix of this too, yeah. how many plugins would you be using at one time? I don't know. You can't tell me. There are yeah. so many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I I, um, I use the plugin. Uh, uh, each time have power with with uh, the DA and. Uh, the, the system I use plugin, I use use plugin, but I don't know how many how many plugin I use for for each for this song. I don't know for this song is I don't know something like uh, let me check. There no, there's, there's no yeah, because this, this is this is a, a a special mix for for the EA show because 
because we didn't have access to exactly, all the this is not the same power. So, uh, okay. This is a special mix for, for the show. Yes, yes, and, and also, also you had, uh, we used also some uh, uh, plugins that we pre-recorded. You know, you're part of the nature of the sound. It's the, what, the beauty of, of such a system is you can use plugins live and automate and automated plugins, but also you can consider plugins as part of the of, of a sound, and then you can use the plugins as part of the sound, recording the recording the res, the result, and then having even more plugins than you the one you you are using uh, live actually. So you actually have Pro Tools as sort of like an someone who was playing on stage with you because he was changing the sounds. Yes, and, and uh, what's very interesting with the, uh, with the plugins te technology and, and, and for instance the way we used it and the way particularly uh, Joachim is, uh, is uh, using them, it's very close to a DJ approach where uh, until the last minute you have, uh, you have uh, the possibility of, of being live on your songs. What, in my opinion, is very important when you are spending weeks on one track or a few tracks to keep a kind of freshness vis-à-vis uh, -vis the effects and being even at the last minute, I mean, having fun with your plugins and, and, and playing live your mix. Well, in my opinion, is going to change a lot the way you, you consider mixing these days, where before you, you, you were into the recording process, then you were on, uh, on a traditional desk I mean, switching on mix, and then you were going into a different uh, process, and, and even on a mental point of view, then your song was more or less finished. What's great with this is you are always in between recording process, composition process, mixing process, even in the mastering, we could, uh, we could even change things live. So it, it allows you to be creative right up until the last second? Absolutely, yes. That's good. Now, you mentioned about mastering, you did that in London, and uh, you wrote to me an email that you took over the, uh, the album on four CDs, that's all? Yeah. When you took the, the album across on the airplane, you had four CDs. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a all, change. All the me. album, um, I can put all the album on two CD row, because, uh, but uh, I make two for backup, security okay. backup. Four. <laughs> but um, uh, we, when, when we, we go to, to London, we have, for example, for a song, uh, Egg Agarim, we have four different versions. So this is four bounds. So that's why we have so, so many CD-ROM. And uh, we can listen all the bounds and choose the, the right version, the shorter, the longer, and uh, some, something different with the EQ. At, at the end, we, we use a, a plugin for, for the, because all, all the song with, uh, uh, sorry, Excuse my bad, my bad English. All 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 song was imported in inside the Pro Tools. We make a big big list track list. We choose the order of the song, test the mix, the song the song the song after the song change order, and uh, when when we when we listen in the studio mastering studio all the album, we need to correct a little bit some some ending on some begin to be more uh, more clear. And so that's why we use plugin uh, uh, just just before before the the, the, the mastering. And so the mastering. That, that's something that's important as well because you went to the mastering place. They had a Pro Tools, so you can yeah. keep your session right up until the very last second. So if you wanted to change something one minute before you you did the actual master, you were able to do it right yeah, exactly. there. Exactly. Okay. But. That uh, that should that can be something dangerous too because uh, you you can take two or three days more in in the mastering studio because uh, there one day you have to take a, a decision and to, to choose okay. the right version. But you always have those options to do what you want right up exactly. until the last. Part. Exactly. Exactly. How about archive? Where uh, you said that you would put the album on DVD? Yeah. You're using DVD for, for backup. Our, for, backup. for backup because all the sessions are actually on DVD and. Uh, because we, we didn't uh, make a, a select a new audio and compact the session. Actually, all, all the recording, all the tech are inside the Pro Tools. That's why when we want to make a new mix, I don't know, for another country, or to make a, another mix for dance club or yeah, a special media, media, we use the original session and we can choose another another piece of voice we didn't use in the, in the album. So, so that's why all the session 
are very big because they, we, do, we did not come back and, uh, and, uh, and close the session. The session is always open. Good. So now you're not sending big uh, tapes by uh, DHL all over the world, all that kind of stuff. It's just a CD that you, exactly. you um, send it by mail, yeah. by courier? Exactly. Uh, uh, last uh, week, uh, Jean-Michel was uh, in Spain and we need to, to test uh, a new version for the uh, Spanish television. And uh, the morning, we I send him uh, uh, an MP3 on his uh, on his uh, power book, and uh, so he can uh, have the his uh, the, the, the MP3 file record the, the television. And another example is uh, for um, uh, doing and make some remix. I, I don't know uh, for the second singer, we send just uh, only a CD-ROM with all the session. So this is the big difference between uh, all all tape. Very, uh, with, I don't know, something like 24 tracks, and uh, we just have to send a little CD ROM. So, uh, yes, I mean, uh, what, what Joachim is saying is really changing uh, our life these days. I mean, this example of, uh, of uh, Spain, I was, uh, I was in Spain last week, and I would just, just uh, to explain this a bit uh, more precisely about the fact that uh, when I arrived uh, in uh, Madrid, we had the wrong version for a uh, television appearance uh, uh, on this song. And then uh, uh, I was in the taxi from the Madrid airport to the TV studio, and I called Joachim in the studio, and I said we are, we are really in dire straits because it's not the, the right version. So he sent, he went into the session, he, he changed the few, the few things we needed, he sent this to the, uh, by the time I was in the taxi, well, it sent that in uh, via email in Madrid, and I got that on this. I, I just had to cut a CD in Madrid, and one hour later, I was I was in the TV studio with the new version that I, I, I he did in Paris. Uh, I mean, 50 minutes before. That's this is amazing. this is exactly the kind of things you can uh, you can do uh, these days. Yes, and we can actually thank the Dewey people because it's through their, their system that we've been able to get the record as... Oh, uh, you downloaded it to their place? Yeah, that's oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They're very good friends then. Very good friends. Very good friends. Very good friends. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, just to sum up, Pro Tools for the, the record, the general advantages for you would be all these various things that you're able to do. The plugins, the automation, the fact that you have the ability to remix now. And then uh, when you're riding in a taxi in Spain, you can phone up and say, I need a different remix, and he'll do it for you. I hope he doesn't do that at 3 in the morning when he goes to the States. It, it can happen, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> now, I just would like to, to say, and, and, and Joachim, I'm sure we'll have more, more things to say, but on uh, my point of view, I think this really uh, uh, Pro Tools concept is... Uh, for me, really, as, a, as an artist, a revolution as big as the first analog synthesizer or the first sampler. Because it's changing the whole approach of composition, the whole approach of, uh, of making music. I mean, it's, uh, I mean it's in the studio, for instance, we are not using uh, analog tapes anymore or even, uh, even I mean, the, the big mixing desk in the studio. I mean, we just used it only for monitoring, what is, in a, in a, in a sense, quite sad, but it's uh, the reality of, of the fact that uh, we always, and you, you know what I'm going, what I'm saying, but we always been uh, uh, taught, or we always learned that uh, the source of the sound is very important. When you are studying, for instance, uh, how to record properly a bass drum or a violin, you know the, the place of the violin is, the place of the microphone is crucial. These days it's not necessarily true anymore because with all these plugins that you have in Pro Tools technology available, you can recreate frequencies, you can recreate even frequencies you don't have in the, in the sound. So you, are, you have a, a great ability to, uh, to shape sounds and to transform lo-fi into hi-fi or hi-fi to lo-fi instantly. And this kind of uh, uh, go and forth going back into the uh, between what you have in mind and the, what the technology is able to, to produce is something absolutely unique and it's going to change in, in my opinion the next few months our way of perceiving producing uh, perceiving the composition pro pro process 
as well as the uh, the work for also images and, and visual and, and visual and, and sound because nowadays I mean doing frankly working on sounds of working on images are closer and closer and uh, there is no more difference almost. I think I agree. I agree. You agree. Very good. Very good. Um, I, I hope that everyone is aware of the fact that Jean-Michel did a very, very important concert for the end of the millennium in Egypt. You all know that, I hope. And uh, as I said at the very beginning of the interview, I was there for uh, the rehearsals. Now, I thought that uh, it was a very courageous thing to do, considering the fact that everybody was talking about the millennium bug. And uh, here you were, you were going to have, uh, I think there were two Pro Tools who were actually there on stage. Um, what were the Pro Tools doing? You had a Pro Tool control as well. Yes, we had uh, actually uh, uh, lots of um, uh, specific problems to solve for this project. First of all, the fact that uh, uh, the millennium and the change of the millennium had to happen for television at midnight precise. It means that then we had uh, time code synchronization for all the visual effects and everything was slagged with uh, Pro Tools. Plus the fact that some sequences or some special effects had to be uh, uh, in total sync with the, uh, uh, the, uh, the visual. And, uh, and then we had to play live on these effects and until the, with, the, with this time code, like, like a movie, being straight at midnight into uh, uh, live live on satellite all over the world. So Protoss was giving the actual cues to people. The actual cues and, and uh, one of the work of the, uh, amongst a lot of others that uh, Joachim had to provide was also to provide some windows until the last five minutes. If some, anything was wrong, we, we, we could get rid of one song. Uh, we, we had to, because uh, it's very difficult when you have uh, such uh, technology being involved in the desert with visual, lots of visual techniques, but also, I mean, some uh, uh, traditional Arab instruments, not knowing, obviously, at all what Pro Tools is, or what what kind of project they're, they're, they're involved in, and playing, uh, and playing uh, instruments coming from, dating, as, as I said, from the Pharaonic age. I mean, being confronted to all kinds of, I would say, different uh, musical technique, I mean, describing more or less the... We had on stage more or less the, the different uh, musical technology of the past... Thousand years? I mean, thousand years, yes. All together and everything had to be, to be in sync. Actually, at least until midnight. After midnight it was. We had the, the next millennium to be in sync all together. So that's, but he told me that it got a, a little bit crazy because uh, there was, at the last minute, there was a song that was very popular that you uh, you prolonged the, and had an encore of four minutes. So he actually had to change something in the, the schedule so that you matched up with Midnight. And he did that live at the very last second. Yes, plus the fact that uh, I missed it. I, 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 I messed it all uh, 30 minutes before before the uh, before midnight by uh, by starting uh, the wrong song. You did. Yes. You started myself, with yeah. the wrong yeah. song. Yeah. So uh, we had to switch, and he had to, it was a bit uh, <laughs> a bit of a headache for him. <laughs> but you're still here. You're still alive. Yeah. And he started with the wrong song. Okay. <laughs> That's good. But everything went well and you got past midnight, the right song at midnight? Yes, and no millennium bug. We knew for quite a while that we'll have no millennium bug anyway. That's good. But he was changing things right up to the very last second. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a, an old mixture of, uh, of having uh, turntables and pro tools and, and acoustic instruments. And uh, everything, I must say, worked very, very well. That's good. Yeah. That's good. You, no. You have to tell us your story of the concert because you were there. Um, the story is true, exactly. But uh, I talk about the Um Kalsum song because uh, it was the, the homage of Um Kalsum. And uh, for the real song, the song has a as, as length of something around four minutes. And for the live, I don't know what's happened, but they play, they play, they play. And uh, they play something around five, uh, seven minutes. So 
for, for me, it was a nightmare because everybody played, uh, the audience was uh, shouting, crying, uh, and uh, I, I look in the condom and say, no, uh, it's well, impossible. <laughs> they have to stop, they have to stop, but impossible to stop because they played it. What do, that was a party. How many televisions were broadcasting this at the same time? You had, uh, what, 60? It was uh, around uh, 100. Um, 100. Or something 110, like that. it was two, being broadcast live over 100. Yes, we had uh, something like 2 billion viewers at midnight, so we couldn't miss that. Yeah, you couldn't be four minutes late. Actually, Everybody is waiting with the yes, champagne, that's right? right? Exactly, okay. exactly, yes. Yeah, that would have been a, a little bit difficult. Yeah. So, it was a total success. Concert. Yeah, absolutely. I saw it. I absolutely. Thought it was, no, it was, it was uh, and we are actually preparing a, a DVD and uh, and also a special mix for this project, uh, DVD with surround sound, and uh, obviously uh, the uh, protein technology is going to be heavily involved in all this. Great. Well, I don't know if there's anything else I really have to say. What I'd like you to do is play the song again for everybody. And I want to thank Jean-Michel Jarre for being present today to tell us about the new album and uh, the concert he did for the Millennium. Um, can we applaud? I'd like to.